Hello, Salesforce admins. Let's learn essential habits for user management. We are very excited to discuss essential habits today. Now at Salesforce, we've identified four core responsibilities that all admins share. They are user management, data management, security, and actionable analytics. And underlying these four core responsibilities is your personal success. Now to keep these responsibilities actionable, we've broken them down into habits, actions that you can take on a regular basis over time. We believe these habits are essential for success. In this video, we'll be exploring the first core responsibility, user management, which includes configuring access and visibility, measuring adoption, and user observation and communication. As an admin, it is your responsibility to provision access to the Salesforce applications, features, functionality, and data your users require. Even a short period of time without this access can have a huge impact on your business. Imagine an inside sales department unable to access leads. Not a lot would get done until access was restored. That's a lot of lost productivity. Every core responsibility is comprised of habits. A habit is a recurring action taken consistently over time. There are four habits underlying the user management core responsibility. Let's take a look at each one in turn. Ella? Of course, Jay. Our first habit is observe your users. Let's discuss why user observation is so important. Salesforce is a platform intended to be customized to fit the needs of your users. That means we need to observe our users and collect feedback to configure the most delightful user experience. Some of us around these parts call this observation a ride along or Salesforce administration by walking around. And the best news is that you can observe your users no matter how or where you work. You could meet for virtual coffee and a screen share or shadow someone using Salesforce in person. No matter how you observe, you should look for opportunities to improve the daily workflow of your users. By observing our users, we are better able to remove roadblocks and streamline their business processes. We are more aware of parts of our configuration that may cause user friction and frustration. You can also use this time to document any changes you may need to adjust user access. To practice this habit, look at your entire user base. Find functional groups like inside sales or a call center. Then look at the various roles within that group. For example, you may have a call center rep and a call center manager. Try to observe each functional group within your Salesforce instance, as well as each individual role. Ensure that you're spending time with individual contributors, as well as managers and business leaders, and map out any parts of your business process that you learn along the way. Lastly, rotate the groups and role that you spend time with. By doing this, all of your users' experiences will be represented in your configuration. Now, if you're new to observing your users, never fear. We've included some example questions here to kickstart your imagination. Remember to approach your observation with curiosity and a beginner's mindset. During your conversations, stick to business process and business value. Avoid speaking in Salesforce-specific terminology. And remember, you aren't asking users for how they would solve any challenges on the platform. Instead, you're trying to uncover areas for optimization or enhancement. Sometimes this won't reveal any new areas for optimization, and that is totally okay. You're free to decide what, if any, solution will best serve your stakeholders. To get started observing your users, schedule 30 minutes each week. Doing this will require proactive communication. You don't have to schedule this on the same day and time every week. As you schedule your observation sessions, remember not every session will yield brand new enhancements or optimization. These sessions still remain valuable though, as you're interacting with stakeholders and strengthening your relationships with them. So that's our first habit. What's next, Jay? Our next habit is reviewing and reporting on adoption, Ella. Adoption is a method of measuring whether or not features are fully utilized. In other words, to determine your adoption, you need to look at all of the features your users are currently expected to use within Salesforce. These may be standard features, 
such as those found in Sales Cloud. They may also include custom features that you have configured, such as custom objects, fields, and automation. To measure your adoption, you'll need to list all of these features and determine a method to report on each. Reviewing adoption will give you a tangible indication of whether or not your configuration is being used by your org. By reviewing adoption, you can catch any new trends while they're still relatively new, which can inform your stakeholder communications or your user guide, which we'll talk about shortly. After you discover that adoption of a feature needs improvement, you can meet and discuss with relevant stakeholders to better understand what may be preventing them from using the system. By communicating this way, you are involving users, which makes them feel empowered. And you're also gathering useful information to improve your configuration. We also recommend performing user audits when you review adoption. To perform a user audit, you'll first need to ensure that your list of active users is current. You only want to give Salesforce access to people that should have it and deactivate any users who don't need access anymore. You will also want to review your roles and profiles, permission sets, and permission set groups to see if any of these are unassigned or unused. Running the Salesforce Optimizer tool can quickly show these to you. Finally, you'll want to ensure that your users' access levels are aligned with their job functions. When you speak to your users, ensure that they can see and do everything their job requires. If they can't, you'll want to adjust their access perhaps through profiles or permission sets. We'll talk about this in more detail in the Essential Habits Security session. To get started reviewing adoption, we recommend scheduling 60 minutes each week. Try to schedule this on the same day and time each week if you can. If 60 minutes is too much or too little for you, please feel free to adjust as needed. Now that we've unlocked the hidden power of reviewing adoption, it's time to learn a new habit. Ella? That's right, Jay. Our next habit is communicate with stakeholders. Now, before we begin, we know communication preferences can vary a lot from business to business. So feel free to use the cadence and the channels that work best for your organization. In general, we recommend a monthly business stakeholder meeting. Now, in this case, stakeholders are people who lead a team that has their business process in Salesforce like your sales manager if you're using Sales Cloud, or your fundraising manager if you're using Nonprofit Cloud. Create a recurring monthly meeting with those department leaders. Now, during this time, you can also establish the communication preferences of everyone involved. And after the meeting, make sure to send a recap to all of the stakeholders. Now, let's take a look at a sample agenda for this meeting. So here's a sample agenda that we've included for your reference. Now, it includes things like upcoming business changes that could affect Salesforce, new Salesforce release updates, internal release updates. Maybe you could use this time to share a recent win or talk about a new business process, change requests, backlog prioritization, and even review various action items. Now, to get started with stakeholder communication, we recommend scheduling a 60-minute meeting once a month. Now remember to schedule prep time for yourself in advance of this meeting. Now that's all for this habit. Jay, can you take us through the final habit? The first step is to ensure that you actually have a user guide. If you don't have a user guide or you don't know where your user guide is, it's your responsibility to create it for your organization. You'll wanna have user guides for each job function and you may also wanna have an admin guide for other admins in your org. Now you can create your user guide with a variety of tools. You could use Quip, Google Docs, or third-party app exchange applications. And of course, you can do some documentation within Salesforce itself. We recommend that you explore, find the solution that's right for you. Where possible, use some of our native features like help text, descriptions, and in-app guidance to direct your users on how to use the features you configure. And of course, you'll need to keep all of these documents up to date to stay aligned with your latest business processes and any configuration changes that you make. We recommend an hour a week for maintaining your user guide. 
it's helpful to keep track of what you configure throughout the week, so we think it's best to aim for the end of the week. So what have we learned? By observing our users, we can identify how to best improve our org and develop trust with our users. By reviewing and reporting on adoption, you'll learn where your users are struggling and how to direct your configuration efforts. By communicating with stakeholders, we build trust with our leaders and we build better solutions. And by maintaining your user guide, you'll boost adoption and admin efficiency in your org. Now, let's take a look at how and why we add these habits into our calendar. As we move through each of our habits, we'll be presenting you with a calendar and sharing our recommendations. These will also be available to download as calendar templates and will include tips and resources in the event descriptions. Remember that all of these are just suggestions. If you'd prefer, you can use this as a starting point and customize it as much or as little as you'd like. Before we begin, it's important to discuss our weekly structure. Our habits are ordered in a way that allows the admin to focus on a three-part cycle each week. Part one is soliciting feedback and observing our users, which will typically fall on Monday and Tuesday. Part two is designing and configuring solutions, which will typically fall on Wednesday and Thursday. Part three is communicating and deploying our changes, which will typically fall on Thursday and Friday. Remember, there is room for this to flex as needed. Not all weeks are the same, and each admin may have unique needs. Now let's take a look at the calendar. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is schedule 30 minutes to observe users. So what I've done is I've reached out to an inside sales business development rep, and I have coordinated time for my user observation. I'm gonna put that earlier in the week so that I have time to take action on the things that I discover. So we've gone ahead and saved that. The next habit that we want to schedule is reviewing our adoption and auditing our users. I'm going to schedule an hour for that, and I'm going to put that in the middle of the week. That allows me to take the notes that I have from my user observation, and uh, I can incorporate those into what I'm finding into my adoption review and my user audit. From there, we want to schedule 60 minutes in the week uh, and that is going to be for maintaining our user guide. The reason that we put this later in the week on Thursday or very early on a Friday is so that we can take the changes that we've made. Perhaps we've made some changes in the middle of the week through these habits or others. We want to make sure that we're actually updating our user guide to reflect those changes. And we want to do that before we send any communication out. And speaking of communication, we're going to go ahead and schedule that right here at the end of the week. Now, uh, our communication for stakeholders, that usually happens once a month. Um, but for example, we're going to say that that falls on the same week here. So we can see how our habits for user management all fall into the calendar as we see it. Earlier in the week, we're focusing on gathering information. In the middle of the week, we're trying to look at what we have and how well we're using it and whether or not it should change. And then we're starting to add documentation and communicate toward the end of the week. I hope you found this helpful. Now let's go back to the presentation. So that's it. We've concluded essential habits of user management. Remember, as an admin, you have four core responsibilities, including user management, data management, security, and actionable analytics. So once you finish this current unit, please join us for the next unit on data management. Now, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Ella Marks, Admin Marketing Manager. And I am Jay Stedman, Lead Admin Evangelist. And you can stay connected with us on Twitter or in the Trailblazer community. And connect with other awesome admins. You can find the admin website at admin.salesforce.com. We're also on Twitter, Salesforce Admins, no I, or use the hashtag awesome admin. We're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube as Salesforce Admins. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you have a great day.